So it's another day of working on the square body. So I've got a radiator sitting in here and I'm planning on using electric fans. The original plan was to use these electric fans off of your normal third gen Chevy truck, but they're just too big. So I went and I stole something from my dad. I didn't actually steal them, he said I could have them. Anyway, these are two nice low profile fans that I'm gonna see if I can make work on here. So we're gonna take a little bit of duct tape here. Hold the radiator roughly in place. So how do these fit? Oh, they are like perfect. This might work better than I thought. These fans are honestly a perfect fit. Right along the bottom edge here, barely touching, barely touching, barely touching. So this kit came with all the connectors where you mount them directly onto the radiator and I don't like that so I'm going to do what my brother did to his 58 so let's get into it. Bang, and it's done. All right, let's pop the fans back on. All right, so this is going to be made out of stainless. The plan is to put a little bolt right here in all four corners of these fans. I'm gonna make a little V support right here so that these don't flop into the radiator and damage that. And this is also gonna be stepped away probably about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a bend along the edge here just to make sure that this thing doesn't flap around at all. So it's about two weeks later and a lot's happened in the background. So we've got the harness on the motor. I've got a separate video coming out on that later because I have to make a couple changes to the harness. And I've made these fancy radiator mounts. So it's a three piece design. This T-bar picks up on the 5 16 18 holes that are in the factory locations. Then we have the spacer and the bottom bracket. So we've got a C channel carved into the bottom of the bottom block and that fits over top of the channel and the top of the radiator. With this piece of rubber, that gives us a nice eighth inch cinch for a nice solid mount. I'm also going to add two little strips that come down in front and behind so we can pick up on the side of the radiator so there's no way that it can flex and pop out of those mounts. So now that we have the radiator mounted, we can make the fan shroud. And the plans have slightly changed on that. This is a piece of 4 foot by 10 foot by 090 sheet aluminum and this is what we're going to make our fan shroud out of. So I didn't get this whole sheet of aluminum just for the fan shroud. We are also going to use that to make a gas tank. I have a quick mock-up of it here, but we're going to have another video coming out on that shortly. So on this fan shroud, all these interior cutouts are, I don't want to say cosmetic, but they're not critical. Our outside dimensions are critical. I'm going to start by tracing our outside rectangle with a square and a straight edge and then I will come back and trace in all of our details on the inside. All right, let's go bend it. So I'm over at my brother's shop. This is my brother, Randy. What's up, I'm the brother. He's building a 58, uh, what is, ugh, not a 58, you already have a 58 Chevy. 50 Chevy. This is a 50 Chevy split window he's building, putting on an S10, that's pretty sweet. We're here for the, the sheet metal bender. So we got to get our Sharpie line lined up on the edge of the die. Okay, I think yeah, I we're am. We're pretty good on this side. Right on the line. Are you ready? Yep. You're going to have to help this up. Go up. Ooh, dude, I might not be able to do this. Nah, it didn't move at all. This bender didn't have enough oomph, so Randy broke out his homemade one that he made a while ago. So we're going to give that a shot. Probably had better luck here because we can manually. Yeah. Manually bend it. You can't get this old ass crescent wrench down tight enough because it's so old. <laughs> Alright. Ready? Yep. Oh, piece of cake. Okay, keep going, don't slap. So the plan got a little hijacked by the tools, and that tends to happen when you're doing custom stuff like this. So I ended up turning to a set of wide jawed vice grips 
to get the fan shroud bent so we could get in there. Worst comes to worst, I have to make another one later, but I have plenty of aluminum. So it's in and it fits. Let's pop it out, get the fan holes cut, and then we'll get it mounted. We've got it cut out. We've got the fan sitting on there. Went and got a bunch of hardware, so we're going to drill the holes and bolt everything up. So I neglected the camera a little bit the past couple days, but we got a lot done. The entire coolant loop is done. For the fans and fan shroud, I used quarter 20 bolts. And I actually found these nice plastic brackets in the bag of hardware. So I used those instead of drilling holes up over here. Each fan has four bolts in each corner, holding the fans onto the shroud. And then the shroud has six bolts, three on top and then three on bottom that hold the shroud to the radiator. For the shroud bolts, I use brake tubing with a quarter inch ID to make spacers. So the shroud is 5 eighths of an inch away from the radiator. For the hoses, I ended up using the stock hoses off of the truck I pulled the motor out of. So we have the stock upper hose that runs over to here. I ended up cutting off about 2 inches and I stretched it with some heat to get it over top of that end. And for the bottom one, I cut about half of it off so that we had a nice perfect angle. You also don't want to forget to hook up your steam vent system. The steam system lets any trapped air out of this system that finds its way in. Let's pop over to my other garage and I'll show you how it works. So on an LS, your high pressure and your returns are both on the front face of the block. So any air that is above this line cannot easily find its way out of the coolant system. That is where the steam ports come in. They are placed at the highest point in the coolant loop to let that air find its way out. Compared to a traditional small block Chevy, we can see our high pressures on the front of the block, but our return is up on top. So right here on the LS is where those steam ports would be, and this is where the normal return is on a small block. Now I'll show you how I have my steam port hooked up. So the vent for the steam port is right down there behind the alternator, and I have it running over and tying into the return line. So this fitting is an inline steam vent fitting. It is barbed on both sides, it's probably about three inches long or so, and then it's tapped for another barb fitting for your steam port to come off of your motor. You can find those fittings just about anywhere and there's a ton of different versions of them, but I'll post a link in the description of the one that I got. I've also seen people drill and tap the top of the water pump and they put in a barb fitting like right about here or so. And that's something that I wanna try in the future, I just don't have the time to disassemble the whole front of the motor right now. Plus, this is kinda ugly if you're going for a clean engine based setup like I am, so it's definitely gonna get done in the future. So I'm still waiting on the headers and a couple parts for my intake to come in. So hopefully we'll be able to fire this thing up later this week. Fingers crossed, there's still a couple things that I gotta button up that are a little bit difficult. But until next time, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe, and let's LS swap the world.